So here we are, a best of one, and spawning up in the top right hand position of Alterim as the Red Terran player. He represents Team Empire, none other than Cass. And his opponent, down to the bottom left, representing My Insanity's Academy, it's Raynor. Always very good time seeing this, and a little bit of TVZ going to be coming up. Throwback, of course, to every single sci-fi genre ever, where it is the humans up against the bugs. I can't actually think of one where that isn't actually the case, unless, of course, you possibly include something like um, Alien vs. Predator, in which case, well, even then, it's kind of like a semi-humanoid thing up against a bug, really, thinking about it, so... Okay, it's a bit of fun times, but for the moment, we are just seeing a little bit of Supply Depot dancing here by Cass. Because why not? I'd like to dance my supply depots. I mean, if you could build a fusion core at 10 supply, or 12 supply in this case, then definitely go for dancing that fusion core. But you can't, so dancing your supply depot is pretty much your next best bet. Interesting to note, the Cass is actually opening with a Rax into a Gas, and likely, therefore, going to be aiming for some Reapers. And the reason that's quite unusual is because, for those of you who haven't seen this map before, there is a base in your base. And because of that, Lots of players will take a very greedy expansion. Now Rayner, he is expanding early, this is a 15 hatch, but that's not crazy because this is ZVT, and no matter what the map, pretty much, you're going to be seeing a 15 hatch down from the Zerg player up against the Terran opponent. Rayner also opting there to go for a 15 um, spawning pool, so a little bit earlier than some people opt to do it. Some players go uh, 15 hatch, 16 pool. Some benefits to both, it's just a little bit greedier. Clearly just wanting to play this a tad more safe, and that's a fair thing to do in a best of one, because you want to be advancing forward, there's no loser bracket or anything like that. All there is, is a win or lose. If you win, you advance forward. If you lose, unfortunately, you're knocked out of the bracket. So, we see Cass scouting very diligently here, sending an SCV up. Isn't actually going to be adding on the Reaper yet, instead going for Reactor first. Now one thing that he could do is opt to go for a double Reaper off the back of this, and that's exactly what we're going to see. So it hits slightly harder, although a little bit later. Not a downside, just a difference. Overlord's going to be coming out of course, being in the cross spawn positions, it's going to take an eternity to get these Overlords over there, so an early scout isn't going to be achievable from the Zerg player as of yet. He doesn't actually know where his opponent's scouting. What he is going to be able to shortly do is deduce that, okay, his opponent isn't spawning to the north or to the right, so it's not a close spawn position. The SCV, though, has now managed to get a little bit lucky, scouting his opponent second. So, finds a little bit of information, going to come in, take a little peek at the hatch, just want to see how many drones are there, that sort of thing. But unfortunately, with the two lings out on the field, we will see that SCV die. Factory coming down now off the back of this, as well as a second gas. Now this second gas is quite interesting, and the reason for that is it's more than you tend to see at this early stage, and it may result in us seeing a starport added on and going into some Banshee harassment. Banshee harassment off the back of this is very nice. You can come into the natural base, start chipping away, and with a tech lab coming down, that's a possibility. Generally speaking though, you'll see the starport started before that tech lab though, so something to keep an eye on. Drone kill is going to go down there. Nice control with these Reapers for the moment. Rayner needs to be a slight bit more careful to avoid losing any more, if at all possible. But because of this heavy harassment play that's coming down from Cass, his command center at the natural base has been delayed. Now if we take a look, we are getting the starport added on. Of course, not the most optimal way to run it because the tech lab already finished and the starport's still a long way up and you want to try and sync those up as best you can. Meanwhile, Hellions are going to have a little bit of a weird pathing issue there. They come out on the outside as they try and hide inside. The rally point set slightly wrong and that starport clearly bugging things out a tiny bit. So that is a little bit annoying, a little bit frustrating. And well, if we keep a close eye on everything coming down at Rayner's side, he's just droning and my goodness is he droning heavily. His second gas has been added on now. Worth noting that he's only got one drone in the gas in the main and he's realised that now, puts two more over. Couple of speedlings making their way across the map for the moment, and if we take a look here, just a couple of Hellions gonna actually completely avoid this as they go the other side of this small crater. 
and that means the Ling's going to come up, and the important thing that they see is the Starport and the Tech Lab Researching Cloak. You can see from the Shimmering that it is upgrading something, and on a Starport it's only ever going to be Cloak at this stage, so a nice little bit of information for Reyna. What he's probably going to aim to do is chuck down a Spore or two just for the detection. The Queens and a Spore will be able to thwart any further aggression coming through from the Banshees. So just a very good little bit of information there. The Hellions are going to be able to get in. 14 more Zerglings about to pop out, but those drones are lining up pretty badly. They need to be careful. Already 11 workers have been killed. The Hellions are going to die. And Reyna, he's still sitting quite comfortably, quite high at the moment. Up at 36 to 32 drones. So needs to keep trying to drone up. Doesn't really want to take many more losses. But when he's producing 9 drones at a time. That is very good times for him. Cloak is about to finish up. Of course this overlord is keeping a good little peek. On what's happening. The Banshee nearly over to his opponent's natural base. But the Spore Crawler just about finished. And the Queen there as well. So this Banshee may get a couple of drone kills. But nothing too strenuous. Hellions at the centre. Just kiting back a couple of those lings. The Banshee actually doing a pretty good job. But with the Spire coming down. Once that's completed. The two Banshee that are about to be out on the field. Aren't going to have too much more luck. Really in achieving much. Because Mutalist's hard counter Banshee so incredibly well that they're never going to be able to succeed. So the Banshee getting a couple more shots down, just attempting to poke and prod. Double Spore Call is coming out just so one at least will finish. Cloak is being utilised but of course the Spore Call is due grant detection and the Roach is going to be able to force back those Hellions. For the moment at least, Reynos seems to have secured himself up quite nicely and if we take a look, only 17 workers killed which is still far more than he ever would have wanted. But it's not catastrophic. He's up at 53 drones. He's got his third base secured. And he's going to be pumping out quite a lot of drones now. Once he feels safe. So this one lone banshee. Still being a little bit of a nuisance. Uh, the second one sitting out of the natural. So actually there are still two up. That was my mistake. But the natural base with the queen and the spore should be fairly safe. It's the third though that's a little bit more vulnerable. Just by the positioning of this spore caller. The queen going to be trying to come over. It's worth noting that a Spore Cooler's detection radius is greater than that of its attack radius. And as such, the Banshee aren't going to be able to stay too far away with obviously the Queens in position. Now, with the Mutalis coming out, that's going to be just another problem for these Banshee. But they've done a decent amount of work. We look 13 kills and 2 kills there. So they've achieved a decent chunk. We've also got Thor production starting up now and a very obvious mech build being utilised at the moment out of Cass. Cass just adding in some Hellbats, he's going to be adding in some Thors and some tanks. Just a very strong play, especially with that third base coming down. Now, there are some benefits to going for a mech based strategy on Alturin. The first being, it's a big map, so you've got a lot of time and a lot of basically bases that you can take, so you can macro up nicely and you've got the money to be able to afford this, but specifically you've got the gas geysers to be able to afford this variety of build. The downsides you have though, are that because it's such a big map and so spread out, it can be a little bit difficult attempting to make too much work. Now, we've got a nice little Hellbat drop coming down here from Cass, and that means that the drones are going to have to be evacuated. That was actually a lot of damage dealt there. If we take a peek, 30 workers have now paid with their lives. 31 as another dies as the Hellbat is on its way out. And that's very good news for Cass. If we look at resources loss. He's not really investing very much to get an awful, awfully high number of worker kills. He's also picked off an overlord or two. Six more about to pop out though will stop that supply block from being too much of an issue for Reynor at the moment. A couple more Mutalisks down on the field. He's up to 14 at the moment already. A good number of roaches coming through as well as road speed and the double evolution chambers. Over at Cass's base, only the two tanks for the time being. And two tanks aren't going to be... That useful. There's also the, only the single Thor. The second one literally just pops now. So with magic boxing, this is still a little bit scary. But with a third Thor now coming out too. These Mutalists may have a bit more of a hard time. They are magic boxed very nicely though. Going to be trying to work away at these Thors. You spread them so the splash damage from these Thors aren't able to kill all of the Mutalists simultaneously. But the Thors taking significant amounts of damage. Now SCVs are being pulled to repair this up. The damaged Mutalists being micro back with the two Vikings aiding in this fight and a lot of the Mutalisks now going down but a good number of SCVs have been killed. Unfortunately, while those SCVs have been killed, 
a lot of Mutalisks went down too. If we look in total, 11 Mutalisks have so far been lost this game, and that's 1,100 gas and minerals that has gone down. Because of that, Cass still trading a little bit more cost effectively. Investing a bit more heavily now in those Thors as well, just really wanting to make sure that he's secure and safe against further Mutalisk harassment. But it's the roaches on the ground, and this is somewhere where a smart play was being formulated by Raynal, that if he's able to be a threat with the Mutalisks, what we should then see is Cass invest heavily in Thors. Thors are not actually that good up against roaches, and as such, maybe the tank count will be lower. But really, what we're seeing is actually Cass being one step ahead. He's producing three Thors simultaneously, uh, three tanks simultaneously. He's already got the three Thors and the Vikings, and so he's feeling pretty safe, and is looking for that good, aggressive play up against the Roaches. Interesting to note that Cass actually moving out quite early, about 150 supply. Pretty much the earliest that you will ever see a Terran player move out. But at the same time, we've got Raynor going for an attack of his own. Two tanks are staying back to try and aid the defense, and this could actually catch Cass off guard, because with a very immobile army of mech, it'll take him a long time to get back, but also a long time to go and counter-attack. So these tanks are now getting taken out. Raynor should be aware that something is up. There is not much of an army here. The supply depot, unfortunately, gets taken down, and therefore the Roach is pushing through. Able to take out reinforcements as they come. The Mutalisks getting a good amount of damage down too. A small group of Roaches staying at the third base just to kill all that off. The Mutalisks going up against the main attack line. Meanwhile though, we have got Cass pushing in with the might of Mech, trying to take out this third base, getting some great damage down. A lot of drones are being killed, but then, so is Reyna managing to kill a lot of SCVs. The third hatchery, probably going to die here. It's gonna be fairly close. Contamination being used to prevent additional tanks from getting out onto the field. That's a nice little touch from Raynor there as he focuses down these factories ASAP to stop further production. One tank though has managed to come out of a further away factory and Cass has been able to demolish the third of his opponent. So a couple of Vikings landing now. Lots of SCVs getting pulled to try and deal with the last remaining roaches. The third base of Cass though is also going to fall. Not lifted, just having to multitask a bit too much. Doesn't have the APM to spare to pick that up. But the real concern is for Raynor now. Does he have enough to hold off this force knocking at his front door? Well, a Thor getting very low on health. Only 4 HP left, but is not taken down. If we look at the upgrades, it's plus 2-0 for Terran Mech, up against 0-0 zero, zero for Raynor. He's trying to assemble a last small army of roaches, but with the tanks in a nice position, I'm not sure how effective that's going to be. In now come the Hellbats. They're going to tail tons of damage up to any drones that get in their way. But also tank up a quite a large amount of damage from the Roaches. The two tanks though have been taken down. Raynor down to just 34 drones. Cass currently sitting at 41 SCVs. He's doing his utmost to try and hold on here. Are there enough Roaches to stop this? Well the Vikings landing too. Just trying to tip the engagement into Cass's favour. Remember, Cass back home is not having to deal with anything. He's shut down most of this aggression, but unfortunately seems to be lagging just a little bit. So I'm hoping this is going to get cleaned out. It's a bit annoying when this happens for a player. If he's dropped as well, it's going to be quite infuriating and may want to resume from replay. Unfortunately though, for Raynor, he has now come back in and things are looking very good for Cass. He takes out what was the main base of Raynor. Not the lair though, that was built to the natural and is continuing to push on forward. Raynor is in a very challenging spot and it's going to take an awful lot for him to come back. With this nice little group of units, if he's focusing down the damage for Thirst, which unfortunately he isn't there, realizes it is very low and will snipe it down, only has a very small number of units left to engage, but he's got an even smaller number of units himself. Trying to put together a tip attack army of roaches just to take all of this out. The Viking lifts to save its own life, which is good play. Conserving units wherever possible is always good. Drones coming up. They're even going to start going up against the Thor, tanking up some of the damage for the Roach, and it will finally die. But has the damage already been done? 86 workers killed so far by Cass, up against just 46 killed by Raynor. And the other thing that's worth noting is that we do have a lot of orbit commands, or soon to be a lot of orbit commands down for Cass, so he can drop the mule hammer and get himself in a fairly good spot. He's also got the transformation servos upgrades coming down. That allows Hellbats 
to switch into Hellions and vice versa, which just allows you to get things going pretty damn quick. We've also got, of course, a couple of Roaches just coming in for a counter-attack, but up against what is six tanks sieged up at the third base, they're not going to last too long, especially considering those tanks do have the plus two upgrades. Plus one vehicle armor is also about to come down, and with that, GG is called, and Cass is going to take the win and will advance forward into the round of 32.